Rural Community Board meeting today. And I'd like to start by asking Judd um, for a karakia. Certainly. Karakia timitanga. Aho ora, aho kaha, aho maya, ki runga, ki raro, ki waho. Riri, riri, ho pai marie. Kia ora tato. Thank you, Judd. Um, do, do we have any apologies for the meeting, please? I've got one, which is Grant Skilton, who's not well. Um, everybody else is here, I think. Yep. Okay. So do I move that Grant's apology be accepted? Seconder? Thank you. Favour? Oh, all right. Thank you. Um, declarations of interest. Nothing on the agenda that's bothering anybody? Okay. Thank you. Um, confirmation of the minutes of our last meeting. Shall I move that they're a true and correct record? Okay. Peter will move that. A seconder? All those in favour? Aye. Against? That's carried. Thank you. So, public forum is item five on the agenda, and that is Michael, is it? Yes. Oh, no. We've got, we've got nothing, nothing under there. Okay. So, six. 6.1, Mofanao Beach Security Camera Committee application to the <coughs> Rural Community Grant Funds. I think Michael's up to speed with that, so um, Michael, can you update us on that? Yes, um, we've had our camera and our recorder um, uh, been uh, basically not working. We've had to renew both. We've renewed the camera, and uh, Graham Palamountain has put a recorder in for us, but we're going to have to pay for it. And it's we're up to probably what twelve, fifteen hundred dollars. We've actually paid for the camera, but we haven't paid for the recorder yet. Um. So what? Other funding have you got? Because uh, your application doesn't cover the whole amount. How do you get the rest? Uh, we we had some money in stock when we've gone round with the cap <laughs> and got the rest. So you've actually had to. Um, you haven't yeah, got, we, you we haven't, haven't got, got. We've only got for the camera. Uh, we haven't got for the recorder yet. It's between eight hundred and a thousand dollars. I didn't get the. Uh, total amount of Graham, but vague on that at the moment. Yep. Yeah. But we seem to be doing a lot of um, police work, like a tractor was pinched from up at Okotoka, drove it all the way down to our beach, drove it out, but couldn't get out to the go down to Castle Cliff. But our camera picked up uh, the Ute and the facial reaction the camera, they realised who one of the guys was, so they drove straight to there and waited for them to, to bring the tractor there. So, it was nothing for the community, but, but it was for the Wanganui community. So, um, so, is the information on the camera, police connects, there's remote access to it? I've got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I'll, I'll do that. Can the police access the data on your phone? Uh, yes, they can. We've got uh, keys for uh, the rural constable, whoever comes out, and they can access all the stuff from our camera. So they have to visit the site to access it? Yeah. To, to access the data? No, no, we've got 
got to wait for the cable to come. It's, it's halfway along Rapanui Road. It's not not with our village yet. Yeah, fibres. We'll hook fibre up to it when it gets there. Okay, so at the moment there's no remote. No. <coughs> okay. Um, so any anyone any other queries regarding this application? Um, so, <coughs> so where are we? I just got to find the right. So, I <coughs> would it be appropriate that Michael just say he's not going to vote? No, I mean, if, if I, I was just appointed today, though. Yeah. Um, and just because I know she's going to vote for me. I don't mind leaving the room. No, no you're going to finish with it. No. Okay. I think just staying from voting will do enough to make sure. Okay. We're, I just need to find it on here, the, what we're, the actual wording of the motion. Where's that, the mills are? Here we are. So it's, <coughs> so the community seeking approval for the Mofanel Beach security camera to the Rural Community Grant Fund, and where's the amount of money that ask it's $1,000, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so where's the recommendation? Ah, right. Okay, so, oh, there we are, yep, thank you. So the recommendation is that the Wanganui Rural Community Board approve $1,000 in funding from the Rural Community Grant Fund to the Mofanel Beach Security Camera Committee to replace the recording component of the community security camera system. So, so would someone like to move? Okay, Peter's going to move it and Brian's going to second it. So any further discussion? Okay, so I shall put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? It's carried. Thank you. Thank right you. Michael, you can have a busy time trying to find the rest of the money. <laughs> <laughs> what so sort of figures needed, Michael? About 1,800. So you've got 1,000, another 800, or another 18? Uh, we've paid, uh, I think it was 600 for the camera. We've got Bernie Reuter doing some thing out there, so oh, bad, I'm yeah. going to call him on him on the way home. Oh, no, so now we, <coughs> we've got... So the 6.2 demels, do, do we have anybody advocating for that, or we're just, uh, we're just yeah. using the information we've got? Um, again, we're just using it. Okay. Speak to it. Right. So we've got another application from Daniel O'Regan for the, um, to assist with the cost of getting students, agricultural students, secondary school students, to Palmerston North, um, and it was a late, here it is, I found it, late item. Oh, okay. <coughs> so am I going to ask for a mover to accept the late item? So, Colleen Sheldon called me two days ago about this other application. Um, so, I, n I need a mover and a seconder that we accept this as a light item on our agenda. So, can I have a Michael, a seconder? Awesome. Jenny, thank you. Um, so, I'm going to put the motion that we accept this as a late agenda item. Uh, all in favour? Aye. 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 Against? It's carried. Thank you. I wonder if this is the someone out there. Hi, Daniel. Good afternoon. <coughs> I'm uh, David, chair of our uh, Rural Community Board. 
uh, and you've come in at an extremely good time because your agenda item is being discussed now. <laughs> and it's been accepted as a late agenda item, so we, we, we would be very pleased to hear from you. Thank you. The, uh, the right hand button. Cool. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you everyone for letting me come and have a bit of a chat to you. Um, my name's Daniel O'Regan. I work for the New Zealand Rural Games Trust, and through that there's an initiative called AgriFutures, and part of that is Clash of the Colleges, which is an amazing race style activation, and students operate in teams of four and go through various modules. It's a bit of a mix of stuff from artificial insemination to body conditioning of sheep through to uh, fencing, uh, knot tying for arborists, um, sometimes even climbing trees with the, with the ropes. Um, and then we throw in a few things like caber tossing, gumboot throwing, um, and harness racing with the, um, with the carts. And so, yeah, there's a bit of energy stuff there for the kids to, to take part in, but then the other side of it is a bit more serious and actual skills that are used on farm. We are trying to work with different groups across the uh, sector, so it's food and fibre pan sector, um, and just at our last event in Canterbury we had um, uh, young fish turn up for the first time, which was a great addition, and we sometimes have Hort New Zealand take part as well, uh, but the majority of the modules are around sheep, beef, dairy, um, yeah, so some of them are like wool identification, body conditioning of sheep and that sort of stuff as well. Um, so yeah, we run this on the 8th of March at the Rural Games Long Weekend over in Palmerston North. The clash has been going for about three or four years so far and we've had participation by schools from Wanganui. Um, what I'm hoping to be able to do through this application is increase the number and also um, reduce costs. What, part of our ethos is to provide and do for free. We work with um, sponsors but also with MPI and they sort of help us ensure that we're able to do this for schools without any costs for them. Um, the other side of it is that we do it in school time, not out of school because we don't want to put any pressure on the farming families because there's already too much going on particularly with extracurricular activities of kids and different sports and those sorts of things. Um, the other side of that Friday is AgriFutures Pathways, which is kind of like a careers expo, kind of gamified uh, to get the kids involved. They have to actually talk to each um, uh, expo site holder and answer questions in order to go into a draw to win prizes. <coughs> With that, it's a varied group, some of it's private businesses that are after employees, others are tertiary institutions, others are like land based training down the road. Um, and yeah, it's just an opportunity for the kids to see all of those opportunities in the one place at the same time. And we run two rounds of the clash on the day and when the students who aren't participating in the first round, they are going through pathways and then they swap around and do the other side. So it creates a whole package, if you like, of, of um, for the student and also for the teachers. Um, yeah, so the application to you guys is about uh, going, I guess, halves with Wanganui Partners. Colleen has kindly offered to share some of the costs. Um, and it's really just about providing that option of the bus to the schools um, so that we can, I guess, grow the numbers of the students involved. So has anybody got any questions? Yep, I've got one. Hey, um, have you got a bank account or are you using only partners? Oh, um, through New Zealand Rural Games Trust bank account. Yep. All right. Is this is the rural games held every year? Is it is it an annual? Yes. And is it every a rural farmer support? Um, and that, so that that's that they're involved. Federated farmers run some of the activities at the games as well. Um, and 
of the activities that we do have. One of those activities is uh, the sheepdog trials and the Wanganui club pretty much competes against another club. Um, We've got a Wanganui sheepdog club? Yeah, well, yep, I yep. believe so, yes. Yep. Yep, yep. Um, Paul Evans um, is pretty much the lead on that. Excellent. Yep. Thank you. Great, great initiative. How, how many how many um, participants would you have at a an event from say Wanganui? In terms of yeah. clash of the colleges, yes. So I think this year we had about four teams, and they were made up from both um, collegiate and I think it was Wanganui City, no, high school. Wanganui high school. High school. Yep. Yeah. How, how many how many bodies would you have? In, yeah. Oh, so about four, probably about 16. 16, great. Yeah, so it's yep. not it's not heaps. It certainly is know, something, though. I yeah. think it's because it's just down the road, yep. what we're wanting to do is, uh, if we can get the funding for this bus, course, it's yep, 40 yep, seats yep, plus yep. five for the teachers. Yep. Um, and I think the sell to the t schools will be a lot easier. We have, to the um, careers path day, there was, we don't have a control of the numbers. So I know a bus load, a van load from Wanganui girls came over. Um, but um, I, I don't have details on it. Right, sure. yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Would you say that a lot of these kids are from the rural farm, rural area? <sighs> Just off the top of your head? I believe so, yeah. Good one, yeah. excellent. Hey, thank Sorry. you. Peter, did you want to? Yeah. Um, two questions. And so, how many, which colleges are. Uh, you know, participating, or which ones are you targeting, and what other funding have you sought from other sources? Um, in terms of the schools, so we're about to reach out to them now, um, but as I said, the, the, the ones that we've always reached out to, or, or that have come, we will reach out to again. Um, I understand agriculture is taught at Cullinane as well, so we'll definitely be reaching out to them. Um, and I'm not 100% sure if it is at City College, I don't know. Mm. Oh, we will make a phone call and go and see them. Yeah. In terms of funding, um, the actual event itself uh, costs a lot more than this. This is really just about the, the transportation. Um, some of that comes from Ministry of Primary Industries. Some of it comes from sponsors. So Massey University is involved. Uh, Horizons Regional Council is involved. Um, and I guess Palmerston North City is as well. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep, I hope that makes it's, it's quite thing. A, yeah. yeah. Bill, did you want to? <coughs> so, so these are s these schools are running an agricultural course for these students. Is that how? It yeah. Were, and are there NCA credits involved? That sort of thing. No, so uh, AgriFutures is created to, um, there, there's the Clash of the College side of it, there's um, the Careers Pathways, and then there's a thing called In-School Modules, and they are there to support schools to deliver the Ag and Hort NCA curriculum. It, they are, whatever, we have a board of trustees with um, about five teachers, one from Fielding, Rathkill, St Paul's and Hamilton, and um, St Andrews and Christchurch and they guide us on writing those modules and creating the modules that they run through the Clash of the Colleges so that they're done in a way that reflects what's needed on the farm and also in business um, as well as being reflective of what's needed for the students to achieve NCA. So we can't, um, I guess, easily say that what we do will you know, by completing it, you won't necessarily get a credit. You won't, well, you won't get a credit, but it provides the student with the experience in order to be able to do the NCA yeah. test. Yeah. If you, yeah. 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 Okay, um, so any, any other questions of um, Daniel? Okay. Yeah, you're applying for $400, and the cost is eight. How are you going to make up the difference? Oh, Wanganui Partners has agreed to fund the other side. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Um, we will. Um, uh, so, what's the process? Do you
move towards deliberate, um, and then we can be in the marginal group and things like that. Um, It'll only take us. It'll, it'll only take us. It'll only take us a, a minute. A minute at the most. So I'm going to ask for a uh, proposer and a seconder for the recommendation that the Wanganui Rural Community Board approves $412.75 in funding from the Rural Community Grant Fund to help provide transport and reduced cost barriers for local students to attend the AgriFutures Agri Clash of the Colleges event and the AgriFutures Pathways Career Expo, Careers Expo in Palmerston North on the 8th of March 2024. So uh, I need a mover, Michael. I'll second Seconder, that. Peter. No, any further discussion? Um, so all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? It's carried. Thank you. Probably be a good place for us to put our shingle out too and go and attend the day with uh, do a bit of marketing. Don't think there'll be there, there won't be many um, farmers. Won't be many from, our, from our region. Yes. Oh, so do you want to do you want a quick adjournment now? Just a quick discussion. Yeah. Could we have a thank you? Um, do you want to go and tell?
Uh, so the next item is the calendar. We were going to tell Dennis. Oh, okay. To the calendar? So we're up to item 6.3. Uh, that the Wanganui Rural Community Board adopts the meeting schedule for 2024 <coughs> as attached and presented here. Um, so perhaps we'll, I'll ask for a mover and a seconder and then we'll discuss it. Someone like to move that we adopt the meeting schedule? Michael will do that and Brian's going to second it. Uh, anybody got any comments? We can all cope with that. Okay, I'll, I'll put the motion then that we um, adopt that schedule. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? It's carried. Um, so where's my run sheet? What's next? Re um, so the next item is item 6.4, the representation review, and we are not going to proceed with that. Uh, at this meeting that will come up again on the 21st of February. So 6.5 is strategy and policy update from Elise is... On her way. Oh, she'll be here in a minute, okay. Did you want any other items after that one? What, 6.6? Focus areas. We had, we had that list up there before, didn't we? Um, so has anybody um, been dealing with, with any particular issues since our last meeting? Grant's probably been doing a bit with the William Birch thing, but he's not here. Have you, have you got involved with that yet, um, Brian? No, I've avoided that. <laughs> no, the only thing that I've been involved in is this. Put your microphone on. It doesn't. It doesn't oh. go. It doesn't no, go no, on no, the. No, no, no. Is is that in the new year? I've um, asked the likes of yourself and and um, Peter and Michael. We'll jump in the truck and we'll do a trip one day all around the back country and show you where we live. Okay, so you get a better understanding of it. That's all. That I'm sort of planning that for the new year. So. Well, that would be really good, and that's... I'll, I'll do lunch, by the way. <laughs> oh, no. it's just, just oh, well, the we can't way. possibly <laughs> decline that off. I don't, I don't you now. Yeah, no, um, I've, I've tasted his cooking now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, uh, and so we'll, we'll get to see some of the forestry roading situations. Too, the really. idea is just to take you guys and show you just what we deal with all the time. And I think you know what it is, but we're just going to reinforce that so that the councillors actually know and then mm. what's happening. Head out the river too, of course. I wonder if we could get a. Uh, All right, Scott. Uh, do you think we could take a couple of cars and include some of the just some of the other councillors? Would be really good. Yeah. Mm. I thought we were going to get a bus and do the. the yeah, well, well I know um, Tex Matthews some years ago yeah. organised um, the bulk of councillors yeah. to do a trip like that. Yeah, the idea was to get a bus and actually do the whole, that side of town. I think it's quite hard to get all the councillors into one bus on one day. Yeah. That's the challenge yeah. I think we found. Well, it, doesn't, it would just be whoever yeah. was available. Yeah. I think <coughs> we'll but um, you might have to rethink your lunch offer, though. Yeah. Oh, you do that. <laughs> and chips. If you took it to Waitotra, the bus would be full. If you took it to my, my Waitotra trip's full with 53, yeah, you're right. Okay, well, I think we should follow up, follow up on that. That's what I want to do anyway. Uh, have that happen. I don't, yeah. Thank you, Brian. Um, would anyone, Bill, have you got something you'd like to um, talk about in this, I, this agenda item? Yep, I have. Um, good news. We've reached an agreement with Council and we've signed a uh, document um, approving the transfer of the land at the pool. Hmm. So that, that's going to solve all the problems that the Fordell community can yep. get on and do their thing with that pool now. Yeah, that's really good. And, and the community, mm. and the community's got some ideas as to what they want to do. Yeah, and how they're going to fund it. Yeah, that's very good. Thank you, Bill. 
Judd? Yeah, uh, I would like to uh, raise the, um, the possibility of Wormley Rural Community uh, Board at the Highland Games. Um, it kicks off in January and we need an agreement now so we can start putting it in place. It's going out, waving our flag, probably putting up the gazebo, taking out uh, our applications, rural grant applications. We could invite um, um, to ho order the local um, the local uh, med group to come out and do uh, psych evaluations on on rural farmers. Who you know, it's becoming quite an issue. We could invite uh, Horizons to come out and talk about water during the summer. We could um, there's quite a bit. we could invite the police to come out, Keith to talk about rural security, and we could get all these people to share the um, cost of the space for us, put up our barbecue, and um, so it's a way of promoting ourselves. If there's a um, desire, if there's a willingness, probably only need a couple of us, two or three, and maybe council staff, the you know, democracy team. So something to think about in the next five minutes because we need a nod today if this is our last meeting for the year. So um, that's one I'd like to uh, I'd like to raise at, at this time. I would like to make a couple of suggestions. One, that you take the um, monkey survey out there. Yep, good point. Or mm. well, the survey monkey, or a monkey of surveys. <laughs> and maybe you should apply for a, um, one of our grants for $1,000 to pay for it. Is there a significant cost involved? There's always a cost. There is no such thing as free. I think there's a cost for a, a site, a tent space, uh, a, a promotional space. But as I said, we can invite these others to come along with us, so we'd go out as a group, share the costs, put up a barbie. If there's a group of people, it will attract people, um, especially if I've got presentations from those people I've just, those agencies I've just mentioned. And does this draw a big audience from the Whanganui region? It draws a huge rural audience. Um, it's a Scottish theme, so wear your tartans if we're going to go. And uh, yeah, it's a it's run at Turakina every year. Mm. So what um, so what would be the process um, if we were to to do this? Um, we, we're too late to organise funding before the event from our grant. Um. We'd probably need the cost of um, of the site, our council gazebo, a couple of tables to put our, um, our, our pamphlets and paraphernalia on, a tent because it'll be hot out there and people are attracted to shade. Uh, so what's the date? I think it's about the 26th, 27th of January, just after the Ratner um, celebrations. But there's always a volume of people there. Yeah. But this is not out. This is out of our area, though. But it still captures people from the Wanganui rural community that go out and participate. Mm. So just something um, to be mindful that the rural community board do have a budget um, for these type of initiatives um, for advocacy. We have um, council gazebos um, and a lot of our flags and all sorts. So we could. We could, um, depending on the cost of, the board could decide that, that this is what they want to do and they would have the budget to fund so it. So would it be appropriate for, for us to, do, to make a call on that now? Yes. Just have a it discussion. Be, yeah. and it's it's yeah. an operational mm. decision essentially, so there's no resolution that's needed to be made. Um, it's just, um, you'd probably just want to get some commitment on who would be there, who would be doing it. Um, and perhaps if we if we give a nod, I'll definitely put my hand up and and, and correlate with Anna. Okay, and so we again, work in, something in terms out. of the formal part of this meeting, we can we can uh, advance this after the meeting. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that offer, Judd. Thank you. We'll um, <coughs> we'll um, discuss it after the meeting and work out what resources. Uh, might be required and who's available to provide them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Uh, I'll just make a comment about the, the connectivity thing. 
I don't, th I think it's quite possible that council are not going to continue with um, the Joe Buckingham role, which we were relying on for a lot of our input with the rural connectivity. Um, um, <coughs> oh, that decision hasn't been made, but I, I think it's possible. Um, so we will have to perhaps change the way, we might have to look at the way we're going to attempt to. Just to uh, remind you that we are on here. Uh, yes, that's why um, I'm, <coughs> that's why I'm saying mm. it, it, it is, Joe's, I have been told that Joe's gone mm, and yes. the decision has not been made yet as to whether her, that role will be replaced. So it's quite possible it won't be. And so we will have to adjust the way we operate in that space if that role is not continued with. Um, I've got some ideas. Um, <coughs> but I think that's something, we'll, it's one of the projects we'll have to be looking at uh, early in the new year. I, I, I mean, oh, would you like to make a comment on that? Through the chair, I just want to comment that the um, people I was working with along the river road, there was like two, three black spots up there. Um, at Artony, they actually went satellite of their own accord, found a provider and had satellite as really good connection. So, yeah, yeah so that, so that, and I think that's going to be the yeah. way people are going to go. And that's where I'm coming from, uh, it is that <coughs> satellite and possibly the Vodafone or whatever they call themselves now, with the satellite texting and that sort of thing. That's probably more the future. <coughs> and so it's possible our role might be more advocating to try and get some funding to help those people in the black spots pay the higher cost associated with Starlink. <coughs> so we know the solution's there. It, it may be, as I say, that we advocate on trying to help the people fund it. And the cell phone, we didn't follow that up. We were told, Joe reported earlier in the year that um, <coughs> there was going to be RCG cell phone towers, two more on the para, para operating this year. We have not had an update on that, uh, but we have, we have found in Joe's notes the person that she was talking to about that. <coughs> so we'll follow up on that and, and report to the um, to the next meeting. But uh, does, is anyone aware of whether there is better cell phone coverage on the para para now? Um, we were told it would be, but okay. So we'll have to follow that up. Um, we did do some work at Kongaroa. I've been out there to look at s some uh, internet black spots there. Uh, and I think we were talking to... Uh, Polly, Polly, Polly Ann was helping us there, and we were going to talk to James Watts from Inspire. Uh, but, but I'll have to follow that up. Uh, th there's an issue there which is very frustrating in that they put the cell phone tower two or three hundred metres back from the edge of the hill, uh, closer to Ford L. And so there's a, despite the fact that there's a cell phone tower there, there's an area including Kongaroa, which does not get cell phone coverage. <coughs> it's an ex extraordinary situation, um, but it's going to be very difficult to do anything about it. Um, they're quite significant. They're Shifting a cell phone tower is is not easy. Um, but I, I, I profits last year. Yeah, I, I have been out there with the Mills and Harriet McKenzie, and we and we've talked with the community there about it. Um, <coughs> but I'm not. <coughs> I'm not very confident of being able to improve the cell phone situation, but we need to look at the internet situation. Frustrating because it's a it's a, a floodplain area, so um, reliable communications really would be a great help. 
Okay, so that's that's what I've got to say on that. Um, so is there anybody else who would like to comment on their focus area? Okay. Thank you. Elise? Or do we need to, is there any anything formal we need to do on that? Okay, um, so can I have a mover, please, for the Wanganui Rural Community Board receiving the report, Wanganui Rural Community Board update focus areas, December 2023, and I've got Peter and Brian. Thank you. All in, all in favour of, of that? Aye. Aye. And against? Carry. Thank you. Elise, this time. That's all right. No, we're having a great day. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Um, so I'm going to give a presentation on the Vision for Wanganui survey that we recently, yep, that we recently ran. I'll just wait for that to load up there. So the purpose of the survey was part of our work um, that's underway um, in terms of creating a new strategy for council and we wanted to get feedback from the wider community to help us develop that. Is that, that's not showing up for some reason. Sorry, we'll just get the slides to show up so you've got something interesting to look at. Um, I will keep talking. Um, so one of the key drivers behind the change, is, I'm sure you're well aware, in 2019, the purpose of local government changed um, where councils must now promote um, present and future wellbeing for communities. And they talk about the four wellbeings being economic, environmental, social and cultural. So the survey was really focused around wellbeing and understanding what does wellbeing mean to the community and what contributes to the community's wellbeing. Any luck? I'll just wait a minute. Maybe we just go off air for a minute, just so it's not an awkward kind of. Okay, ready to go back on air. So there's the leading edge, we won't go over that one. Okay, back on air, sorry about that. So um, as just mentioned before, um, this was about um, the community wellbeing um, aspects changing in the Local Government Act and community wellbeing being at the, the top of our strategic framework now. So we ran a survey, um, it was launched in September um, and was open for about a month. Um, the purpose of it was to get feedback from the wider community to develop the um, strategy. There was a pretty broad engagement program there and we went out across all kinds of channels from digital to in-person events. We hosted, I think it was close to 20 in-person events. Um, and we got 661 responses to the survey and interestingly we actually had 115 hard copies so showing that you know there are still a lot of people who still like to do surveys in hard copy. I won't go over the um, demographics in detail but we were really pleased with the broader um, ethnicity profile we got um, and um, you know, 661 is a, is a good number, I think, from the community to respond to that. In terms of locations, you probably can't see that graph in detail, but the most respondents came from Aramoho, Castlecliff, Gonville, Springvale, St John's Hill, Wanganui Central, Wanganui East, 
and then other which included quite a few rural communities as well where they were you know identifying the really specific location from where they're from in terms of age it was a relatively good profile there as well so we're quite happy with that it's just a good spread although we would have liked to have seen more from the under 18 year olds so the first part of the uh, survey was really about what makes Whanganui stand out. The first question actually was whether or not you were living in Whanganui and 96% of the respondents said they were here living in Whanganui, so that was great. This is really just a word cloud emphasising um, what people love about Whanganui. You'll see that community um, is in the centre and that was the biggest response. So the majority of responses focused on some aspect of the community, including family, whanau, friends, um, or characteristics of community, such as it's a friendly place to live, you know, it's a welcoming place. Natural environment was the other really big standout, so many aspects of the environment were highlighted, but you'd expect, um, as you would expect, the awa was really significant, as well as beaches, open spaces, and even quite a few comments about how warm the climate is in Whanganui, um, compared, to, compared to other centres, and the creative culture as well as the size of the city and the ease of getting around were also things that people really love. Um, just some nice quotes up there. So question two was, um, oh, I think I've talked to a lot of this, just, yeah, what do, you, what do you love about Whanganui? And then question three was very similar, asking what's unique about Whanganui? So again, it was a very similar response, um, but things that stood out a little bit more was around heritage. Um, and also our history, as well as our coastal landscape. Um, so it was, a, 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 again, a very similar kind of response, but a um, couple of standouts there. A couple of quotes there. Next question was, <coughs> what's your vision for Whanganui? Um, which you can imagine we received a fairly diverse <coughs> mix of responses, but we did some theming up. Um, so a lot of responses around affordability, which is understandable given the current <coughs> economic climate. A lot of people saying, you know, having housing, having affordable housing, the cost of living um, is really top of mind. A um, lot of comments around partnership approach um, and that being a really key part of Whanganui's future. Again, housing homelessness um, was top of mind and um, art, heritage and culture, you know, greater emphasis on these and as these being key to Whanganui's identity and then the environment in terms of future generations and people looking out for what yeah what are we doing to protect and restore and care for the environment. Sorry I can't read the quotes but you'll get the presentation pack and hopefully people can read them online. Um, and then the next questions were about Te Awatupua. So we asked people whether they were familiar with um, Te Awatupua, um, if they'd like to learn more and if they had any further comments. And as you'll see, there was basically a 50-50 split um, for those questions. And the majority of responders um, who were, wanted to learn more, we had really positive comments there. So that was, um, a, that was really helpful, just to see the awareness there, um, which was really great. And then we went into the more um, detailed questions about what contributes to people's well-being. So we did group these up into the four well-beings, and apologies, you can't see the detail there, but I'll read it to you. The top five things that contributed to people's social well-being that we got from the survey were friends, family, housing, recreation and leisure time, and their local neighbourhood, um, followed by manaakitanga, sport, other social groups, community groups, connectivities. So there's a really big theme there around connection between people and relationships. Environmental wellbeing, what contributes to environmental wellbeing? The top five were parks and open spaces, fresh air, fresh water, the coast, and Te Awatupua, the river. Um, economic wellbeing, housing popped up here again, um, I think in terms of housing affordability. So it was at the top five were housing, local economy, income, education and training opportunities, and food security. And we were asked yesterday about food security and what that means, and I think that's really about people knowing that they've, they can afford to get food and that it's available and that um, you know, it's going to meet their needs for them and their family, and that's obviously something that's really top of mind for people in our community at the moment. Was it the first time that education 
it, it um, entered the responses? Um, so it only entered it for the economic wellbeing question, um, but you'll see later on in the future focus questions, people talk about education is really important, which makes sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, those top five, housing, local economy, income, education, and food security, a real mix of things in there. Because yeah, um, I'd been filling that in, the schools would have been one of the, uh, one of the things I would have put at the top of the list is, is what Whanganui does quite well. Yeah, um, these are things that contribute to economic wellbeing. Yeah, I guess we could have had schools in there. Um, and then finally, cultural wellbeing, the things that people ranked as being important to their cultural wellbeing were health and wellbeing activities, events, music, arts, and sport and recreation, followed closely by live performance, heritage, local history and tradition, diversity celebrated. So there's some... Um, quite strong themes in there as well. And obviously calling to Whanganui's, um, you know, Whanganui being a centre for, for art as well. So we asked people to rate how important they thought each wellbeing was. And interestingly, um, environment popped up as the highest, followed by social and economic and cultural was the lowest. And then we asked people what influenced their well-being in a positive um, and a negative way. And we've talked about this before as being two sides of the same coin. So social connections, you'll see on the far left there, was the thing that improved people's well-being. But if those social connections weren't good, it decreased their well-being. And then the same went for the outdoor and environmental factors. So if the environment was really good, and then that improved their well-being. But if things weren't looking so good, then it decreased it. But then the third bar line along, you'll see hobbies and personal interests was only in the positive. And um, physical and mental, emotional health was, again, two sides of the, the coin in terms of if it was good, it was uplifting well-being. If it was not so good, it was decreasing. And I think that all makes complete logical sense. Um, and obviously the things that were more in the negative were things like housing and economic environment and cost of living. So then we asked people um, how they thought things could be improved under each wellbeing. Those percentages are just how many people responded to each question. Again, sorry, this is very small, but I will read it out for you. So in terms of the top three things that the community want um, council to focus on to improve wellbeing under environment was parks, open spaces and greenery, river and coastal health, and transport and infrastructure. And then for social, the th top three things were community engagement and events, public spaces and recreation. And I'm going to skip over other and go to housing. So I think that's really important. And economic, the top three were business support and growth, employment and job opportunities, and then council's role in supporting economic growth. And then the cultural was inclusion, diversity, and public perception, cultural events, arts, and celebrations, and Māori culture, tradition, and language. So then we asked a, a higher up level question about what you think would improve wellbeing for the whole community now, so rather than under the specific wellbeings. And then those top three were local infrastructure, and amenities, community t togetherness, or that connection, and business development, employment, and the cost of living. And then when we asked about the future generations, this is where the education came in, because the top three were environmental stewardship and sustainability, local infrastructure and amenities, and education and training. So again, that makes sense. Those are more of your future-focused um, challenges rather than current well, they are all current challenge, challenges, sorry, but I think people were thinking more in the, in the long term. So um, some nice quotes there, um, and it was just really great to see all of the positive feedback coming through, which we'll be using to shape up the strategy. So in terms of next steps, um, we'll be working on the draft strategy between now and March, and then we'll be doing public consultation alongside the long-term plan next year. Um, with hearings and deliberations in May and a final strategy by June. That's it. So thank you very much. I just thought, wanted to share that back um, with you. Happy to take any questions.
Thank you, Elise. Um, <coughs> one of the more sobering things I think there is that <coughs> some of the things highlighted as what the community would like to see improve and what we're providing, <coughs> they're, they're some of the things that we're going to struggle to improve with the current financial situation. Um, so it's it's a real bet. It's going to be a real battle for this council to um, afford, or for the for the district to afford some of those aspirations. And so when this consult consultation document comes out for the long term plan, <coughs> there's going to be some pretty um, tricky discussions to be had so and I think our little group here we we need to identify any particular issues around that that we want to ad advocate for or against uh, when the time comes yeah thank you I do want to note that the strategy is long term so it's meant to be something that's taking us out 10 30 50 years beyond you know giving us that long term vision and direction. The long-term plan is also a 10-year plan. So while the current economic environment right now is really unfavorable, I think history would tell us that that will change and that won't be the case for always. So the 10-year plan is looking out over those 10 years and the strategy and that, should be. Right. And David made that point that the next couple of years is, going, is, is difficult, but it doesn't look quite so bad after that. Um, and then I'll just give some very, very brief policy updates um, that were both reported to strategy and policy yesterday. So I won't um, go into any detail, but I just thought you as a rural board may want to share these around with your um, communities. So there will be a consultation in February opening up around reducing speed limits around schools. So I encourage you to share that, particularly I know a number of rural schools um, will be interested in that. And then there's also um, a consultation around road naming um, policy for new roads. So this is just when new roads are being built, um, as well as the potential to extend this to parks and reserves. So have a look at the information that gets sent around and please distribute to your communities so we can make sure we get um, rural voices in there as well. And obviously the same goes for the long-term plan consultation next year, David, that would be great to get and hear from as many people as we can. So thank you. And um, that's it from me. Thank you, Elise. Has we got any, anyone like to uh, make any comments on Elise's presentation? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so we're going to move that we accept, let me get the wording, we receive the report, Strategy and Policy, policy Update, November 2023. Uh, so can I have a mover for that recommendation? Jenny? Second. And Judd? So if there's no further discussion, I shall, put, I shall move that the Wanganui Rural Community Board receive the report, Strategy and Policy Update, November 2023. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. And against? Carried. Thank you. So that would appear to be the final item on the agenda. So perhaps, um, Judd, would you like to? Certainly. Uh, closing, Karen? Yep, karakia. Karakia. Yes. Karakia. Waka mutanga. Unuhia, unuhia, unuhia i ki te uru tapu nui. Kia watea, kia mama, te nākau, te tinana. Te wairua, te wara i te ara takatū. Koya ra e rungo waka iri here ake ki runga. Kia wate, kia wate. Ai ra kua wate. Ho, pai mari. Kia Thank you, Judd. Uh, so, and I declare the meeting closed. Thank you for your.